got various different twines here. Also got a little piece of this rope. So. This, I haven't undone the package, is four inches. Um, so I'm just going to use it rather than uh, cutting a piece of cardboard. So basically, just going to wrap. I've got a little string there for my center. I'll pull it a little bit more. Yeah, so that way it goes the whole way. And I think I'll use this one too. By the time I unfringe that, that will probably be bushy enough. So, go ahead and tie this really well. After the basic tassel is tied, I also tied it about an inch down from the top. You don't have to do that, you could just leave it as a little fluffy tassel. But with this, I thought it would look much better, and I wrapped it a few times uh, and then tied. To make it poofier, I unwrapped each individual little rope piece there. Each piece had like three sections, so I unwrapped those. And then put it together, held it up, and gave it a little haircut at the bottom. To give the tassel a little bit more design, I am using a wooden bead I get from Amazon. I'll link that in the description box. And I use an embroidery needle to thread the bead through the top ties. If you haven't watched how I made the can into a pocket and attached the tassel, um, you need to go back and watch that video first. Kind of help clear things up. I'll put that link in the description box. But now it is time, since my can is prepped, it is time to paint. And I'm kind of a sloppy painter, so I covered the tassel with some plastic and some blue tape. Now to paint on metal, I like to make the paint a little thicker and give it a little bit of texture because adding baking powder to your paint will do that. And it really helps it bond very well to metal, to glass, any surface actually, but especially metal and glass. I did not add just a ton of baking soda to the paint. I really just added maybe, I don't know, a teaspoon and a half or so to that small amount. I just want it to have some tooth. Now I've done two coats of paint on the can. And now it's time to work on the embellishment. So first, um, I'm looking at the transfer that I want to use. And I realized that the first trim that I had planned on using was going to be too wide and would interfere with the transfer. So I measured and selected the one below it using IOD's Air Dry Clay. And this is IOD Trimmings Mold. Oh, it's either, well, one, two, or three. I'll have to look and put it in the description box. Using Tight Bond Quick and Thick, I'm going to glue that to the bottom edge of the can. And with this size can, which I believe is 16 ounce, uh, 
it really was a close fit just using one piece of trim and I kind of made them mash together a little bit. You'll see uh, once it dries I'll have to add a little bit of air dry clay because it does shrink. Now there's my second, no that's my third coat of paint there. On the trim and a few little spots on the can I'm going to do the faux rust technique and I'm using Dixie Bell's coffee bean brown paint. Now when you're doing the faux rust you can use either well any shade of brown or you can use black. And I give credit by the way to Victoria of Old to Ooh La La. Um, she did a Facebook live of her first tin can pocket posy where she also used the rust technique. So while your paint is wet you want to sprinkle on cinnamon. I have cloves mixed in there also and you could also use nutmeg uh, which has a little bit grittier texture but you need to sprinkle it on in the spots that you want while the paint is wet. Then you used a brush to kind of mash it down in there in places and then you saw me use the hair dryer. Now I can flip it over and do the same thing again. I am distressing very lightly here with some sandpaper just to kind of bring back a few little spots of the original metal color and then I realized oh I forgot my little extra little here and there's of rust that I wanted to put on the can so I had to go back paint with dark brown add the cinnamon press the cinnamon down in missed a spot and then blow dry it again at this point once everything is good and dry you want to seal your can and I also sealed the trim uh, and I just used a polyvine dead flat varnish. Anytime you're going to add a transfer you need to have a sealer underneath it and on top of it. Now you might have noticed or can notice that the can looks a little bit aged already. Well that's from the cinnamon. Um, I used the dryer so I did a speed dry and so some of it got in the varnish when I was varnishing the can but honestly that's okay to me because I'm going to distress the whole thing anyway. Now this is a transfer from um, IOD's traditional pots and it's some sweet little birds. Now this is a harder surface to apply your transfer on. You use that plastic stick that comes with each of the transfers when you purchase one. And what I was doing there was rubbing pretty hard actually, but also taking the edge of the little stick and going in the grooves, each little groove, and got it to release that way. Again, top coat over the whole thing. So sealers applied below your transfer and on top of your transfer. To give this pocket planter a further aged look, I'm going to apply some faux moss to the trim. This product I love. It's from Pintart, a European company. It's called Moss Effect Paste, and it comes in two colors. I, however, only ordered the dark green one, and so I'm going to play around here and add a little acrylic paint. Uh, to a little dish and add some of that paste and see if I can't create a little bit lighter version. Now I will also go over uh, the Moss Effect paste after I dry it uh, just with some straight acrylic paints that are lighter to give it more of a well a true moss look. So you just dab on the two colors of paste here and there and now I am using a stencil brush to kind of um, tap into it to create peaks and after that you use a, a heat gun or I guess maybe a blow dryer would work but as you start to dry that the, this is the coolest thing it starts to puff up and looks like moss here in a minute I'll show you a close-up after it starts to puff hopefully you'll be able to see that
Now this is another European product that I used almost exclusively to age things, uh, but it is Stamperia Vintage Antiquing Paste. It is a solvent based product, so it's a little messy to use, but basically I apply it and then use like a baby wipe. I'm applying it not only above the trim, but a little bit on the trim, rubbing it some on the edges and then along the top rim. Two additional products that I like to use are Dixie Bell's Gilding Wax. These two are bronze and gold. And again, I'm just kind of hitting some of the peaks here and there, and then you take a wet wipe and kind of rub them back so they're not quite so uh, loud. And then this is a white wax um, alchemy, I believe, uh, vintage white wax paste that I applied. So now it's time to fill my little pocket. So the first thing to do is I cut some uh, styrofoam, some floral foam that I get from the Dollar Tree. It used to be a dollar. Now it's a dollar twenty-five. But basically I just keep hacking away at it until I know I can push it down in there. Before I do that though, I want to go ahead and attach my hanger. This is some brown paper coated wire that I get have in a long roll that I get from Amazon. I'll link that too. But I want to go ahead and apply that, which I did on one side, and then left the other end kind of long. It's not tied off yet. Now I'm using those two ties from the tassel and tying it around the foam. That way that tassel is not going to ever come out. Using my hot glue gun, I then attach some Spanish moss, and then I'm going to fill it with flowers, whatever flowers you choose. Now since I'm copying my first design, I'm again going to use uh, some faux lavender picks. To finish off the hanger wire that is sticking out, I like to make little curly cues. And so I just use the end of a round paintbrush and just kind of wrap that wire around the paintbrush and then slide it out and you have a cute little curly cue. If you're interested in purchasing any of these projects, I have decided to start putting some of the smalls on my Etsy store and the link will be in the description box below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this pocket posy number one. Stay tuned. The next tin can pocket posy I'm calling Flowers on the Vine. And here's a sneak peek.